This is Appalling News. I'm Paul Chatham. The wonders of the world never cease to amaze us here at Appalling News, and none more so than people who call themselves fat liberationists. We had never heard of this communist subgroup, but with their introduction of fatties for a free Palestine t-shirts, now we have, and we can't unsee it. Let's let the words of organizer Hannah Mushabek speak for herself. This project came about as a way for me to activate my fellow fat liberationists to fight against the genocide happening in my homeland. I wanted to solve a problem I have been observing in my community, a lack of protest garments for those in larger bodies. Fat activists have been shoulder to shoulder with me as I march for my people. Free Palestine. Of course, you've been marching shoulder to shoulder. You wouldn't have fit otherwise. Apparently, You've solved the lack of protest garments in larger sizes. Your hate shirts come in XL3X, XL6X, and Tent City. There's also a crop version which would definitely rid the Jewish homeland of Israelis. But what is fat liberation? The online definition is fat liberation, like other liberation and justice movements, is the idea that fat people experience systemic structural oppression and that to address this, society must be restructured to end this discrimination and create an inclusive, equitable society for people of all body sizes. By structural oppression, do you mean floors not made of reinforced concrete? We apologize for that joke in advance. It is not easy to lose weight. But it seems to be very easy to lose one's mind. As with the student protests, the vast majority of people have no idea what they are protesting or what free Palestine even means. We suspect that most of these women of indeterminate sexual interests are just happy to get clothing that fit over their enormous boobs. But as much as Mushabek waxes poetic about removing Jews from the planet, let's not forget that these fat liberationists are a nasty bunch. Just look at the torrent of hate Adele received when she left the fold, and by that we mean removed all the folds from under her chin. Adele said, I feel bad if anyone feels horrible about themselves, but that's not my job. I'm trying to sort my own life out. How dare Adele decide that she wanted to be healthy, not get diabetes, heart disease, cancer, or a host of other conditions related to obesity. And clearly no one feels more horrible about themselves than these women suffering from a lack of self-esteem which is the perfect cohort to promote this lunacy. Yes, fatties for a free Palestine hope to send food aid to children in Gaza, but check the aid containers to make sure all the Twinkies haven't already been eaten. Back here in Canada, whose only remaining industries are maple syrup and government jobs, the Canadian Cancer Society apologizes for not calling cervix front hole in non-binary disclaimer. On a web page about cervical cancer, the society is apologizing for referring to the cervix by its technical name rather than euphemisms such as front hole. The agency also admitted that men can have these body parts too. And by men, we are assuming the society is referring to trans men who have female body parts. Of course, it is not outside of the bounds of credulity that the society is also hedging its bets and not wanting to offend trans women who believe they should have cervixes. Because the society has gone nuts 
and medical agencies are scared to death of 0.06% of the population. The Canadian Cancer Society, in a page on cervical cancer screening for LGBTQ people, wrote, Trans, non-binary, and gender-diverse people face significant barriers to accessing health care and are less likely than cisgender people to be screened for cancer. Are we going to rename the uniquely male prostate cancer to not offend a trans-identifying woman? When a female identifying as a man walks into a clinic, will the gynecologist have to comment on how big the patient's imaginary schlong is? What does advocating for equal access to cancer care mean? What access does this person not have? Appalling news reached out to the Canadian Cancer Society for comment, but has not received any response as of this taping, and we don't expect any from this captured chicken shit organization. The Society wrote, We recognize that many trans men and non-binary people may have mixed feelings about or feel distance from words like cervix. You may prefer other words, such as front hole. We recognize the limitations of the words we've used while also acknowledging the need for simplicity. No, the words have no limitations. They mean what they say. Only you simpletons need simplicity. Julie Birchall said, Trans ideologues have long tried to erase or appropriate any word that is specific to females, from women to mother and now vagina. And they have gained a foothold in our schools and in our media. Now gynecological health providers are swallowing the stupid pill too. Let us leave you with this final thought. Cancer does not care about your mental health issues. This has been Appalling News, and that's the way it is.